Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. Researchers at the Political Economy Research Institute at the University of Massachusetts Amherst have just released a new edition of the Greenhouse 100 Index. Now joining us is one of the authors of the Greenhouse 100 Index, Michael Ash. He is the chair of the economics department at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Thanks so much for being with us again, Michael. Thanks for having me on, Jessica. So, Michael, one of the big surprises in, in this index that I found was that many of the world's largest fossil fuel companies, household names like ExxonMobil, Chevron, uh, Royal Dutch Shell, BP, they didn't make the top 10. Can you just explain to us why, why is that? So that's a great question. Thanks for asking. Uh, the Greenhouse 100 focuses on uh, releases at the facility level. So we're talking about um, burning of fossil fuels and the release of greenhouse gases that happen right there at the facility. Uh, and so the top of our list is dominated by electrical power generators. These are facilities that burn fossil fuels, coal and, and other fossil fuels to produce electricity for, uh, how, for homes and businesses. Uh, refiners are producing a product, gasoline, that's about to be burned, but it's going to be burned mostly in individual automobiles and companies' trucks. So the release is going to happen after the product of the refinery is uh, purchased and um, purchased and then, then consumed. So to get the full picture of greenhouse gases, we need to take a look at a cradle-to-grave life cycle of the fossil fuel. In the Greenhouse 100, we're focusing on the actual production of greenhouse gases right there in the facility, with, again, electrical power generation at the top of the list. But other things that we use every day, like gasoline, um, is, uh, is, is, is not included in the Greenhouse 100. Gotcha, gotcha. Let's talk a little bit about the EPA's new rules on um, greenhouse gas emissions related to power plants. Do you see there could be a decline in um, some of the top polluters no longer being electrical companies because of these new regulations? So, well, at the top of the list, I think we are seeing declines as coal declines as an important, as from, from its enormous importance in U.S. energy production. I believe it was over 50% as recently as 2000, as recently as early 2000s. Now it's, I believe, below 40% of U.S. electrical production. So we're seeing the decline of coal. Coal is a very, very dense greenhouse gas, um, greenhouse gas emitter. You get a lot of greenhouse gases per unit of energy with coal. So, um, well, I think we need a more complete transition to renewables uh, and using energy efficiency. The shift from coal to other le um, less greenhouse gas emitting um, fossil fuels uh, has, has reduced some uh, emissions at the very top of the list. Have you noticed any new players, any new big polluters? So, no, I think the list is pretty stable. Again, these companies will often shuffle ownership. One facility may, uh, one company may sell off a facility to another. But the top of the list has been relatively stable. These are, um, and, and it's stable for a reason. I think that's a reason that we need to confront. These are facilities, these are companies that are producing electricity that homes and businesses use. So uh, while there are, there, there may be better, there are better ways to produce electrical energy, in particular moving away from coal, increasingly moving towards renewables, um, there's also a demand side pull that means that these electrical uh, producers have, are at the top of the list, that demand side pull is the dependence of uh, homes and businesses on the electricity that's being produced. I mean, I think it points to the idea that we really need a uh, national plan for moving towards uh, non-greenhouse gas emitting sources of energy. I'm glad you mentioned a plan because I was going to ask you, what, what do you plan on doing with this information? What do you hope comes out of this investigation? So the hope in the Greenhouse 100, as with um, our companion uh, Toxic 100 uh, Index, is to um, inform and empower uh, communities, activists, socially responsible investors, environmentally sensitive managers to take action, to use the information as a source, as, as a basis of leverage, as a tool for assessing, uh, the perform for assessing the performance of, um, of US-based uh, US companies in these environmental domains. Uh, it allows us to have a lens into how these companies um, are performing to track changes over time and to um, ideally to reward companies that are doing better with the additional investment um, and potentially to punish companies that are uh, not cleaning up their act uh, by withholding, uh, for example, investors' funds by seeking or by seeking regulatory action. 
And considering there's a growing movement for um, colleges, um, institutions to divest from fossil fuels, this could certainly be fuel for them um, to make their case, it sounds like. Yes, so using this list, it's very easy to track uh, what companies are uh, particularly salient uh, greenhouse gas emitters. And again, I, I hope that the, uh, this will uh, prove a tool to engage in public dialogue, dialogue with those companies, dialogue with regulators, and, um, and in um, action in uh, financial, um, financial markets and in the regula regulatory forums. All right, Michael Ash, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me on, Jessica. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.